CompTIA A plus Core 1 Complete Training Course. Exam Objective 5.1. Given a scenario, apply the best practice methodology to resolve problems. Troubleshooting Methodology. Troubleshooting is simply the process of problem solving. In the world of IT, you will be called upon to solve problems on a regular basis. Having a step-by-step -step approach to troubleshooting will help make this task much easier. In Exam Objective 5.1, CompTIA has outlined a troubleshooting process to follow. This process can be broken into six steps. 1. Identify the problem. 2. Establish a theory of probable cause. 3. Test the theory to determine the cause. 4. Establish a plan of action to resolve the problem. 5. Verify full system functionality. 6. Document the findings, actions, and outcomes. The first step in CompTIA's troubleshooting process is to identify the problem. To do this, we must turn to the left side of our brains and think logically. Fortunately, we have a few guidelines that can help keep us on track during this stage of troubleshooting. The main objective at this stage in the troubleshooting process is to gather information. Information can be gathered in many ways. You can try duplicating the problem. Observing the issue as it occurs can give great insight. You can question the users. If a user is experiencing the problem, they will have first-hand knowledge of the issue. Also, don't discount that the issue could be user error. Computing systems and their programs, at times, can be complex, so misuse is always a possibility. Identifying the symptoms will help narrow down possible causes for an issue. Symptoms could include error messages, logs, or physical conditions. Many times we can use our sense of smell, sight, touch, or hearing as diagnostic tools. I would probably avoid taste, though. Determining if anything has changed is another way to identify a problem. Commonly, issues arise after changes or updates have taken place. These changes could be environmental or infrastructure-based. Finally, if data loss is a possibility, perform a backup before making any changes. Step 2 in CompTIA's troubleshooting process is to establish a theory of probable cause. This step is closely related to step three, which is to test the theory to determine the cause. These two steps may also be repeated as many times as necessary, as sometimes our initial theory is wrong. If at first you don't succeed, try again. If you have completed step one, identify the problem. Then you hopefully have gathered sufficient information about an issue to proceed to step two, establish a theory of probable cause. Here you will begin to think about possible causes to an issue with the hopes of narrowing down the list of suspects. When first getting going, start with theories that are easy to test and be sure to question the obvious. Assumptions at this point can be catastrophic. Let's say we receive a complaint that a user's laptop is not working. An example of questioning the obvious would be to check if it is even charged. It may also be necessary to conduct external or internal research based on the symptoms. For this, you would use a research knowledge base. A knowledge base is a self-serve library of information about a product, service, or topic. A knowledge base could be compiled by a company, manufacturer, or simply the internet, which would probably be the biggest knowledge base of all. The whole idea behind a knowledge base is to pull from the experience of those who have come before you. In other words, if someone has already experienced the same problem and has documented the solution, and you trust the source, then maybe their solution can work for you too. Step 3 in CompTIA's troubleshooting process is to test the theory to determine the cause. Coming up with a theory was a great start, but now you need to test it. While testing is the logical step after establishing a theory, we need to remember these two steps are an iterative process and we might need to repeat them a number of times. Testing a theory will require some kind of experiment or action to confirm the cause of an issue. 
This can include changing out a component for a known good component or performing an experiment on a test system. Once your theory is confirmed and you have found the root cause of an issue, the next step is to resolve the problem. If testing does not confirm your theory, establish a new theory. At some point, you may run out of ideas, and that is okay. At that point, you need to find a way to escalate the problem. A form of escalation could be seeking help from another technician, a supervisor, or a specialist in the area you are having an issue with. After determining the root cause of an issue, you can move on to step four in CompTIA's troubleshooting process. Establish a plan of action to resolve the problem and implement the solution. Within your plan of action, you are likely to come to one of three solution measures, repair, replace, or ignore. Ignoring a problem as a solution measure is self-explanatory, so I will focus on repair and replace. The choice between repair and replace will usually come down to cost. Repairing is usually a cheaper alternative to replacing, but not always. When establishing your plan, start by deciding if you will repair, replace, or ignore the problem. The rest of your plan will fall in line after that. Another item to be aware of when establishing a plan is to identify the potential side effects of your plan. Many times in IT, systems are interconnected. A change to one system can often have unintended side effects on another system. You may not be able to prevent every side effect, but proper planning can at least keep these to a minimum. Once you have established a plan of action, it is time to implement your solution. The biggest concern with implementing a solution is minimizing disruptions and obtaining authorization. If you did a thorough job while establishing your plan, it will include detailed steps, required resources, and most importantly, a rollback or backout plan should things go wrong. Also, you should have spent some time reviewing any related vendor documentation for guidance. Having these items in place will help the implementation process run smoother. Your job at this point is to cause as little disruption to the systems in place and their users as possible. In larger environments, it may even be necessary to seek authorization for a change. This authorization might come from a supervisor or a change advisory board. Whatever steps you take, just be sure your actions always align with the corporate policies and procedures for the implementation of changes. After the implementation of a solution, it is time for step five of CompTIA's troubleshooting process, which is to verify full system functionality. While you may have only made a change to one system in IT, it is common that multiple systems will be interconnected. Thus, in addition to verifying that you resolve the initial issue, you will need to verify the system as a whole continues to function properly. Now that you have solved the problem, we want to make sure it does not happen again. Preventing the recurrence of an issue is where you can truly set yourself apart from other technicians. Though not always in your control, the recurrence of some issues can be avoided with user education, by changing a process, or by using an alternate software or equipment provider. The final and last step in CompTIA's troubleshooting process is to document your findings. Again, the last step is to document everything. Document the symptoms, document your actions, document your outcomes, and document any lessons learned. That way, when a problem is resolved, there is a complete record of everything that transpired during the entire troubleshooting process. This can be extremely helpful when providing any technical support in the future. Do you remember when we discussed the research knowledge base a few moments ago? Well, where do you think a company's knowledge base comes from? Knowledge bases evolve and grow over time as issues are experienced. So do your best when documenting any issues you resolve, as people other than you may come to rely on it in the future. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more great content.